Well, guys, what a day it's been. Kind of May, I'm watching a couple of videos, and of course, Andrew Thomas Price put out a video with the bushcraft and survival skills. Um, he really is an ambassador over here uh, in the UK and really worldwide, I suppose. A lot of people would remember Andrew from the A to Z of bushcraft, which he posted several years ago. Um, he doesn't actually live too far from me. And uh, he obviously runs quite a good bushcraft school up here. A very knowledgeable instructor. And of course on that he was doing the May whistle, which is, I forgot all about it. It was a traditional time of the year, of course, where um, certainly in the Victorian times, a whistle would be carved from a piece of wood. And um, down in Cornwall, they were kind of used for sheepdog whistles and all types of other stuff. But of course, in World War II as well, I've read articles and books where they did a little demonstration on how the kids could keep themselves occupied with, with knocking themselves up a, a, a whistle. And that's because in World War II, of course, most of the kids were brought to the countryside. So they kind of really learned a lot of new skills when they were there from foraging for medical, you know, they were paid some money on to believe to go and pick some poisonous plants and then they were dried and used for medical purposes. And there was a, a small article I did read going back when I was doing uh, the Green Lane project about um, these whistles, the May whistle. Now, you can use willow for this or sycamore. I just find the sycamore works a lot better for it. And of course, uh, traditionally, you've really got to get your friends to do it. So it'd be nice on YouTube to get a few people trying to make one. Um, let's see if Sandy uh, will go out and Ben Orford. I'm sure Ben will have a go at one of these. And who else is there? Well, let's go big. Let's get TA outdoors and see if he will do this video. It really does represent, I think, a traditional whistle. They date back centuries, but it, it, for us, it, it really does in the UK, um, the traditional May whistle. And they're pretty easy to carve. You just kind of need a very sharp knife, some patience. And there is going to be another whistle that I do later on on another little project. Um, sharp knife, you know, you, you can use your bushcraft knife or a folding knife, you can use kind of whatever you want. Of course, in World War II, they wouldn't have had the tools as good as this. They would have kind of been using pen knives. So a small case knife or a small pocket folding knife. To start, we do need to kind of make it look a bit like a whistle. So we kind of just carve around the edge here a little bit. I just want to make a little bit of a bite piece on it. It doesn't have to be nothing special. Just a bit more comfortable when you go to blow the motherfucker. It's pretty cool. So just carving a bit of a bite piece out of that. Yeah, that'll do. And of course, now I've got it like that, I need to kind of wring this off because I don't I want to break this so it slides off. Just cut into that bark. Or you can see the sap. And that's why traditionally it's done in May, is because that sap is, is rising. And it's really wet and damp, and you can see how you can quite easily separate the bark. Cut around it. Oh, the water's just oozing out of this one. And then where I want it, I want to if go that way. I'm going to go that way, I think. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to put a little bit of a smiley face on here. Nothing amazing, nothing too big. You can always play around and alter this. So I kind of got that. You can see I'm kind of getting whistle shape now by doing this. A little too sharp with it. I am going to keep it nice and neat. That'll do. Perfect. 
Now I've got to try and separate the bark and there's a few ways you can do this. Sometimes you can just twist it off, other times it will need a little bit of a bang and you can just use your knife, the back edge of your knife and give it a tap. So what I'm doing is that. Everyone's going like he's spine whacking his folder. I've got full confidence in this knife. But of course, if you've got access to a bigger bushcraft knife, like I have, even better. It doesn't need a lot. Let's just see if it'll go. No, I need to get on that board, I think. Let me get on the board. Hopefully, no. Nice and easy. That will come off. Oh, mine's starting to split. Don't split. Put that somewhere safe. And we carve now our chamber. Little push cuts. Start carving. Once again, you can use your big bushcraft knife. There's no reason why you can't. You've got to be very careful using sycamore because it will split. So just be mindful of that when you're doing projects like this. Keeping that knife way away from me. Take them bits off. Let me go for my bigger bushcraft knife. Just use that tip on the bigger bushcraft knife. Just find it carves up a little bit better. Now what I do need to do is just take a snippet off of that to allow air to go into it. Great thing about this. There, let's try it. If I've done this right, everything lines up. <whistles> Definitely need that bit of a bigger air chamber in there. Carve yourself a bigger air chamber. The bigger the air chamber, the better in projects like this. where you get that piff. I just cleaned that out as well. Gives me an even bigger air chamber. Let's try it. It's trying. Ooh. Fun little whistles indeed. You can get them a lot louder than this. I'm gonna try a different couple one day here. Mine's starting to split and that's a disaster, but what you can do if you get one splitting, turn it around and just re-carve it if you have to. So I'm gonna be playing around with this for a while to get these cool different sounds. So that's really kind of the whistle. Uh, bushcraft whistle fun little projects <laughs> to do it in the field i say i'll try and knock up another one and i'll see how i get on with that but let's see if sandy will do one ben orford 
uh, TA Outdoors. Let's see if the guys or anyone else want to be have a little go. Post your video. I'm tagging you all because we're on bloody lockdown. So uh, let me try and mock up a few more. Eh?